now is in more dimensions. Is it still mind-boggling that these songs are timeless? I mean, from We Are Family <laughs> to Greatest Dancer, <laughs> that people of all generations still know this <laughs> stuff. That they're not only <laughs> that they're crazy. anthems. That, like they're, they're yeah. literally anthems. Does it blow your mind? Did you have any conception that when these songs were being written or put out, that here we are in 2016? No, not in your wildest dreams. I used to drive Nile crazy. I was 16 years old, had braces. I used to follow him around the studio and ask him, is anybody ever going to hear this song? And I know he wanted to say, shut up, little girl. Go sit in the corner. It's going to be okay. But he, was, he used to always say, just, just trust me. Just trust me. I wasn't allowed to hear it until it was time to sing it, totally. And, I, and you know, the, the ad lib was done in one take. I'm very proud of that. And that's because they believed in spontaneity. They believed that uh, we don't want it to sound over rehearsed or over learned. And I was used to getting my songs. What people don't know is, you know, my sisters and I, we had, we had lots of hits in other countries way before we were family. Uh, when I was 13, I like to parallel it to Michael a lot. Isn't that crazy when you say the phrase, when I was 13, yeah, I already I had 13. hits? <laughs> I had hits. It was, there, our first hit was called Mama Never Told Me. And it went to number one in the UK. And I was 13 years old. And so we used to travel overseas. and go do these massive concerts and then come home and get on the bus and go to school. <laughs> I never talked about it to my friends. Can you imagine, and I'm dying to know your thoughts, what would it be like being famous at that age in this era with social media? I don't know if you could do in this with social media. Without getting screwed Not, you, you couldn't unless you just had a totally different identity or you didn't use your pictures on social. You just can't. You know, now it's a whole different game. And... Um, I, don't, I think you just have to have a healthy attitude in knowing that it's concomitant to if you're going to be in the public eye, you're going to get the paparazzi, you're going to get the madness. So you have to really want it and love it. I've learned just from a very early age of growing up on stage, one's your life and one's your, your work. And you, know, and you can't get it confused. And so, again, like when I would come home after these massive concerts, it would be wherever, Tokyo, we had a hit record there. And, a different record in the UK. I would get on the bus, go to school, and you sit with your friends and, you know, what did you do this weekend? They have no idea. I, well, they'd go, I went to the mall, I went to, you know, the movies, and I'd go, I went to work. Because I, in the beginning, I would go, I was in Japan. And then they'd look at you like, you know, these silence would come across the room, like, like no, alien? you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> you came up like you were lying or bragging. or So what it did do, it gave me a healthy perspective that, you know, this is your work. Your life is most important. Your life comes first. And I would just balance. It gave me a great balance. And, you know, I, I think it would be really hard to do now, you know, especially with Instagram and Twitter. And, you know, everybody, you know where you are, and everybody tells you where you are. And now I think, honestly, especially artists, it's become a way of being your own public relations yep. person. So in a way it works for you, and then in a way, you know, you have to, you have to balance it.